talk about Jesus. We come to sing about the Lord. We come to worship the Lord. We come to praise our God. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. For feeding me. I said, thank you, Lord. For feeding me. Thank you, Lord. For being with me. Thank you, Lord. That you've never forsook me. Everybody's going to get settled here in a minute. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you made up your mind? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Have you made up your mind? Yes. You looking for a seat, sister? Somebody give her a seat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sit right over there. Okay. Now everybody happy? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. When we get out of the bed, we won't have that problem. I hope not. I hope not. I mean, it only holds so many people, you know. But uh, we're not going to complain. More is better. Amen. Thank you, Father, this morning. Thank you, Father, for the bread from heaven. Yes. Feed us. Speak to each and every heart. Fill us with your word. Something that we will never forget. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Turn around and tell somebody, forever and ever. Amen. Now you can be seated. God bless you. Thank you. Forever and ever. I'm in this. I'm in it forever. Ain't that something? I mean, that's really something. The word forever is an amazing word. It's a, there's no other word to describe forever except eternal, eternal, everlasting. It's all the same. Forever and ever. There is no ending. By the way, we're going to have Donna's daughter. What, what, what's her name? Huh? Nicole. Nicole. Where's she at? Oh, she's in, she's back at work. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. We're going to dunk her today. In, uh... She wanted to get, she wanted to get baptized in the creek, so we're going to do that. Uh, anybody else that wants to, you're... You can come and be baptized. You're welcome if you want to. Where's that at? Just down the street. We're going to have it after service, probably about 1 o'clock or something like that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll decide on the time, about 1, 1.30, something like that. Now, unless anybody wants to go eat first, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, get through around, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get through around here sometime about noon if we can keep this preacher, you know, Keep the reins on the preacher. We'll get out here by then. <laughs> uh, then we'll all meet down at the creek about 1 o'clock or something like that. Okay. All right. All right. I want to read to you this morning from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5. He begins the chapter with, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Yes, 
be followers of God as dear children. Did you ever play follow the leader when you were a kid? Huh? Uh -huh. Yes. I see your hand. You know? <laughs> Everybody. Sure you did. This is what he's saying. Follow God as dear children. Not as somebody smarter or wiser or knowing better, but follow God wherever he leads. Whatever he does, whatever he says, follow him. Be imitators. Be imitators of God, of his ways. And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. And then he goes on to describe the things of this world that we are not to follow. And I'm not going to read all of that. But he says in verse 8, You were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. If we follow God and we imitate God, we will walk in the light. Not in the darkness of the world. Flee all those things. He says sometimes you were darkness. That doesn't mean that when he said there, what he said there doesn't mean that you were just in the darkness. But you were the epitome of darkness yourself. Amen. You were part of that darkness. So when a person's in sin without God, they're lost in the world, they are not only in darkness, they are the darkness. He said, walk as children of light. Because you've been called into the light. Jesus said you are the light. How about that one? If you were the darkness before, now you're the light. Why is everybody afraid to think of themselves that way? Is it because you're afraid you haven't done everything you think you should do as a Christian? You're not all that you think you should be as a Christian. So therefore, you're, you kind of hesitate to say, well, I'm the light of the world. Jesus said, first of all, of himself, he was the light of the world. He that followeth me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then he turned around and said, now you are the light of the world. Amen. So it's his light, of course. It's his light that shines in us. But Christ is not here any longer walking among us as a man. But we're here. So therefore, as long as we're here, we have the light and we are the light. Don't think of yourself as any le anything less. You are the light. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory. And what makes you sure is the love of God in your heart. It's not, it's not pride. It's not arrogance. It's the love of Jesus. And it will always guide us truly. It will always guide us in the truth. So that what we say and how we behave and how we act toward others will be in truth and in love. Amen. Because when you have the light, you can see where you're going. And you can help others to see where to go. 
I mean, after all, if you're, you're the guy with the flashlight and the other guy don't have one, where, where are they going to follow? You ever go hunting at night? I have. I've been hunting tonight, coon hunting. You ever been coon hunting? And the guy with the light is the guy you want to follow. <laughs> you follow somebody else, you'll have to follow over there in, the, in, in there where the alligators are swimming around. So we want to follow the guy that's got the light. He knows where, he knows where he's going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what you are. You are a light in a dark world. You were once darkness, but now you're light. Okay. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. What God produces in you is truth, righteousness, and goodness. That's the fruit of light. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That is light. When you show the goodness of God and you speak the truth and when you behave in a righteous manner, you are exposing the work of darkness. You are by, by, the, by your very life that you live every day exposing the darkness around you. Because when people behold you and see you, they see something different than what they see in themselves Amen. or see around them. So be that different person. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be a Christian. Don't be afraid to do what is right. Don't be, don't be afraid to have integrity and do what's right at home when nobody's watching. See, that light now that works out there in the dark, it works at home too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Hallelujah. 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 It's got ever ready batteries. It's always working. Amen. Yeah. It never quits. <laughs> Amen. That's right. So the light shines day and night, whether you're at church or at home. Or among friends, neighbors, relatives, especially relatives. Anybody, everybody, anywhere, everywhere, the light still shines. And that just simply means you walk in the goodness and in the righteousness of the Lord. That doesn't mean that you're walking around with your nose stuck up in the air thinking you're better than everybody else. It's just that you realize, thank God I can see now. <laughs> thank God I know where I'm going now. Thank God I wasn't over there, but now the Lord has put me here, and I want to help them get out of where they are so they can get over here in the light. Yeah. And when the opportunity comes along, comes around, the Lord will make that opportunity happen, then you help that person get out of where they are. Amen. Because that's what the light is for. Amen. Amen. Your life as a Christian is to expose the darkness, to show the goodness of God, not to judge or condemn anybody, but to show them by your action what the goodness of God is in your life. Praise God. So that when they look at you and they say, how come everything always good happening to you? How come you always seem to be so happy all the time? How come it is that you never complain about it? How come it is that, I mean, you, I mean, you just the happiest, of, of pleasant person I've ever met in my life. I, what's going on with you? And you, you end up being the kind of person, maybe, that some people just want to be around because, because there's some, something about your spirit that attracts them. There's something about you 
that, that they, maybe they desire that. Maybe they're looking for that for themselves. Amen. Maybe they're tired of what they've been, uh, you know, they've had all along and, and it's same old, same old stuff. And they see something different in you. Yes. Now, some, that's not always going to be true with everybody because some people are going to look at you and say, oh, you're just an oddball. You're just a <laughs> troublemaker or you're just a... a you're just trying to stir up problems in, in, the, in the country. You're not because you don't go along and compromise with everything. God didn't call us to compromise with sin. He didn't call us to compromise with the world. He called us to be the light of the world. Amen. I mean, right is right and wrong is wrong. Good is good and evil is evil. God's the one that, God is the one that determined that and you can't change that. Amen. Even if you say something different, that doesn't change it. It's what God says that counts in our life. It's what God says. And so we're simply called to follow what God says. And uh, adjust ourselves. <laughs> Submit ourselves to His leadership to his word amen? amen and that makes a difference in the world that makes a difference in your life and the difference in the lives of your family and the lives of everybody that you're around it makes a difference so stick with it don't give in and give out and give up stick with the lord and make up your mind be resolved be determined and go on. I mean, what's the use? In, what's the use? I mean, why, why, why would we want to walk around in the dark? I don't want to walk in the dark. Do you? You take a man that's been blind all his life and he gets healed. Do you think he ever wants to be blind again? Now he sees the light of the world. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. See, the way that God uh, directs our lives is into, into those things, that behavior that is acceptable with him. The only one who has the right to judge us and to judge what, what is happening that, that is good is God. He's the only one that has the right to do that. So God, so you, you, you know, we're always concerned about whether God hears us when we pray or whether God listens or whether God cares about us or whether God is, you know, uh, if we pray, is he, is, he hear, is he listening? Is he hearing my prayer? But know this, that the Holy Spirit produces in your life that which is acceptable with God. Amen. It's important to know. It's a wonderful thing to know that the very life you live by the Spirit, is acceptable with God. Amen. And so when you pray and when you come to God, there is no doubt. You have no doubt about God and what He feels about you, how He thinks about you. Because you're following the light. And you have that light. Yes. And you have that knowing that the Spirit gives to you. And you can go all day long knowing, Lord, everything is good 
with you and me. That's worth more than gold. God, everything is good with you and me. I can see that. It's not just because of, of what I have done myself, but what you've been doing in me. What you're doing in my life, Lord. And as I listen to you and follow you and, 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 and see what you're saying and obey your voice and, and follow along. Lord, you're not leading me anywhere but in the paths of righteousness and the path of goodness. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What do you think and why is it so important for you to be a Christian to follow? Because it is for his name's sake. Amen. What does that mean? That means the name of the Lord is holy. The name of the Lord is righteous. The name of the Lord is good. The name of the Lord is faithful. The name of the Lord is everlasting. The name of the Lord is forever. The name of the Lord, hallelujah, is precious. The name of the Lord, hallelujah, is hallowed. And for his name's sake, he leads you in the path of righteousness. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do anything else but that. He wouldn't lead you off into the darkness. He wouldn't lead you off into sin. He wouldn't lead you off into error. Because his name is holy and just and good. And for his name's sake. Hallelujah. So, so think about it that way. I am what I am for his name's sake. I'm going where I'm going for his name's sake. I'm doing what I'm doing for his name's sake. That's powerful. Hallelujah. His name's sake. Hallelujah. All right. One of these days we won't have to worry about these things. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Stand up from the dead that is among you. Stand up from the dead that is among you. Don't lay down like they are. Don't lay down and go to sleep with the dead. But rise up. For Christ is calling you, he says. Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Be diligent. He's talking about diligent carefulness here. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Don't waste the time. Don't let it be lost. Don't let the day go by without standing up for Jesus. Amen. Don't let your life pass by in the darkness of this world. But let your life be that of light yes. Yes. and life. Spend the passing of your time in this world in the light of God. Not in the darkness. 
stand up. Be counted. Hallelujah. You know, oftentimes we look around at things that's happening going on in the world. And it seems sometimes to damper our spirit. Sometimes it may seem to bring us into despair or discouragement. Wondering what in the world is going on and everything is getting worse. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? What is next? But when light is shining, it's shining. Regardless, regardless of the darkness of this world, when the light is shining, it's shining. Be the light. For darkness cannot be light, and light cannot be darkness. Did you hear me? We're not half light and half dark. We are the light. Don't let the devil sit on your shoulder and tell you anything different. You are the light. Yeah, there's darkness, but there's light. Amen. Yeah, there's evil, but there's good. Yeah, there's a lot of bad things going on in the world. There's a lot of wonderful things going on in the world. The devil's got his crowd, yeah, but the Lord, he's got his crowd. He's got his church, and we are a part of God's church. The devil's doing what he's doing, but God is doing what he's doing. Hallelujah. And I'm part of what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. God's got a hold of this thing, man. The devil's going to go to hell and all the darkness with him. But the Lord is going to save his people. Well, what in the world are we going to do? And you get so worried and nervous and afraid of what, you, what in the world we're going to do, what's going to happen next. What's wrong with you? Don't you know that the Lord above can rain manna down from heaven for you if you need it? Don't you know that he can provide a meal in the wilderness for you? Don't you know that the light is still shining no matter how dark the world gets? The sun is still shining. Hallelujah. So there. <laughs> Turn and look, somebody said, there. Amen. Yeah. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yeah. Don't let the devil steal everything. Don't let this world steal everything from you. Don't give up. Don't give up your right. Don't give up your joy. Don't give up your peace. Don't give up the things that God has given you. Let the devil take it away. And don't give up on the Lord. Don't give up on what he can do for others that you see out in the world. Well, there ain't no hope for that guy. Oh, I ain't no hope for this world. Let me tell you something. Jesus is still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. He's real. He's alive. 
And no matter how bad this world gets, he is still good and he is still God. Oh, no, Brother Bob, that Antichrist is a fiction to show his face in the world. We better look out and watch out. We better be prepared. Now, let me tell you something. I'm looking for Jesus to come back. We are not the darkness. We are the light. We are the light. And we walk in truth, in goodness, and righteousness. So we need to get used to the idea when people walk up and ask you, how you doing? Yeah. And I'm bad about it myself a lot of times. You know, they ask me, how you doing, Brother Bob? And he goes, well, I'm doing okay. <laughs> well, I'm making it. I used to say, well, I'm sneaking by. <laughs> Man, I ain't sneaking by. I'm the light of the world. You are the light of the world. We're not sneaking around corners and down alleyways. We're walking out in the broad daylight of the day. Hallelujah. We are the light of God in the world. We have a word of hope and faith and goodness and everything that God is. That's what God put in our hearts. Amen. That's who we are and what we are. Hallelujah. Redeeming the time. Here I come to save the day. <laughs> Y'all don't remember that one, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you older than I thought you was. Amen. <laughs> Redeeming the time. The day. We're not going to let it pass by. We're not going to let the devil steal that from us. Amen. Don't let discouragement steal your victory. Don't let sin rob you of your righteousness that you have in God. Don't let the problems of life put so much pressure on you that you forget who you are. Every one of us go through those things. I do every day. <laughs> Seems like every time I turn around, there's something else pressuring me. But we are the light. We are not of the darkness. And Satan, the enemy of our soul, is, a def is, is defeated. He is a defeated foe. All he can do is lie and sneak around, slither around. And sh sh in your ears. Don't listen to him. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, do not be unwise. <laughs> Boy. Do not be unwise. To let those things happen to you is being unwise. Come on, that's right. To listen to the devil is unwise. Yes, that's right. To be disturbed and upset by what's going on in the world, that's unwise. Yeah. Yeah. To let things slip, slip out of your hands, slip away, that's unwise. Yeah. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Amen. You are the light. Amen. You have an understanding. Yes. God has given you wisdom. And knowledge. God has made you to know his will. He's made you to know what he's already done for you. He's planned for you. He's, he's opened up the, the way for you in this world. Yes, you will encounter problems. Yes, you will encounter attacks. Yes, you will see the enemy come against you. But you have the armor of light. Jesus said, upon this rock, upon this rock, let me hit it real good there, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell 
shall not prevail against you. You are the armor of life. Let me give you a little, little inside information that I read one time. I'll just pass it along. And then you can go pass it along to somebody. Jesus told his disciples that at Caesarea Philippi. I believe it was Caesarea Philippi. Which is up in the northern part of Israel on the coast, I believe. You can look it up. And it was a city at that time that was inundated with much idolatry. It was a Jewish town, but a lot of Gentiles lived there, a lot of Greeks, Romans. And it was a mixture <clears throat> of things. A lot of, there was a lot of wickedness in the city. There was a lot of idols. A lot of different uh, people who, from, from, from around the world that lived there. Amen. And they exchanged ideas, exchanged religions, and they all just kind of, kind of like America. They just kind of lived together and just you know, live and let live type thing. But the Jews at that time called Caesarea Philippi, they gave it a nickname like we gave New York City the Big Apple or any other city you can think of that we have a nickname. They gave that city a nickname, the Jews at that time. And you know what it was? They called Caesarea Philippi the gate of hell. Because it, it, was, it was a one of the last cities on the this side in Israel, between Israel and the Gentile world. So it was like a, a, a between city, a between the, the nations, the countries. And so everybody came there from both sides and lived together, and it was a very wicked place because of all the idolatry and idols and things that were there. And Jesus said, the gate of hell itself shall not prevail against what I'm building. Amen. Do you see that? Even in the very middle of such a place, where all the wickedness of the world congregates, Jesus said, nothing is going to prevail against what I build. In the very face of evil, God is going to do something good. When it looks like the world's going to be overflowed, overflowed with, with the flood of the world, God says, I'm going to build my church and it's not going to prevail against what I do. When it looks like it's going to overflow, it's not going to happen. Because it cannot stop the light from shining. Amen. Be it ever so dark, be it ever so wicked, be it ever so hopeless looking, nothing will stop the light from shining. The world is turning day and night, night and day, good and evil, summer, fall and winter, and springtime again. The earth is turning, continues to turn. But nothing stops the sun from shining. Our lives continually change. Things come and go. We look at our lives this morning. Look at your life this morning. Look back at your life. Look at all of the things that's happened in your life. All the changes that's been made. Some good. When you look in the mirror, some bad. And I'm not going to look at anybody when I say that. <laughs> so 
Some of us look at our lives and say, well, there ain't no more hope left. And others look at their lives and say, well, at least there's hope. And everything goes on. Day speaketh unto day, night unto night. The years come and go. And yet the sun is still shining. We take for granted sometimes. What would you do? Let me ask you this question. What would you do? What would we do? If the sun stopped shining, it would bring a halt to everything, wouldn't it? Yes. Suddenly, all of our concerns and all of our cares and all of our worries and all of our problems and all of our interests would suddenly come to a screeching halt when the sun stopped shining. We'd be in the darkness. And when you're in the darkness, you grope and you wonder what we're going to do next. What's going to happen? Where are we going to go? It's like when a storm comes and the sky turns black and the rain is pouring and the wind is blowing. And things all around us are being destroyed. Destruction is everywhere. What do we do? We find a hidey hole. <laughs> We're waiting. We're waiting. The electricity's off. The water's off. Everything's off. What are we doing? We're waiting. Amen. We're hoping yes. for the sun to come shining through again. Yes. And for the relief of having our lives come back to normal again. Amen. God in his mercy showing the world. He is showing the world his mercy. Well, they realize it or not. They may take it for granted or not, but he's showing the world his mercy. No matter how bad it gets, God is still on his throne. No matter what storms we face, Uncle Phil, God is still on his throne. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. But why? Because the light is still shining. Amen. And there is always hope in God. Yes. We are children of hope. We are children of light. We are children of faith. Amen. We are children of God. Amen. Do you see that? Yes. God, who is above all. God who is everlasting. God who is creator of all things. We are children of God. Not of this world. But of God. We are in the world. But we are not of the world. Not anymore. Not anymore. 
So therefore, the things of the darkness of this world does not control us. Amen? It does, it, it, <laughs> it does not make the decision for us. It does not determine for us. It is the Lord. Amen. Well, what's going to happen, Brother Bob? We lose everything we got, and the world coming on end, and things are getting bad, and we're going to lose everything. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. The Lord's going to send a bunch of ravens down there to feed you. The sun. Jesus is still the Son of God. Amen. And He is still King. Yes. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad. And we will walk in the light as He is in the light. And we will be at peace as he is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. When we are being filled with the Spirit, as we walk in the light, as we are being filled with the Spirit, and that doesn't mean that we're getting more of the Spirit, it means that the Spirit is getting all of us. You may say that again. Some people seem to think they get, well, you need to get more of the Spirit, man. You get to fill with the Spirit. Get filled with the Spirit. As if being filled with the Spirit, you're getting more of it. You're getting more of the Spirit. No, the Spirit's getting you. Everyone that comes to Christ, everyone that makes Him Lord of their life, Savior of their life, the Holy Spirit comes into their life. And we are to be continually filled. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. It means you need to be filled with Him. Amen. Read in the book of Acts over and over again where it talks about Peter and the, some of the disciples when they stood up Amen. to say something. And Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, Stood up and preached. Time and time again, it says that in Scripture. Being filled with the Spirit, does that mean they didn't have it before and now they're filled with it? No, it means that the Spirit that was in them got a hold of them. That means that light that's in them is shining out of their ears and out of their eyes and out of their mouth and it's just speaking forth the words of life. When the Holy Spirit comes into our life, He wants to get all of us. Amen. We don't have, you see, He doesn't have a part of us with all of us. When we're being filled with Him, He is taking hold of every bit of you. Now you think about that just for a second. When you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, that means He is taking control of every facet of who you are and what you are. He's taking control of your mouth, of your heart, of your eyes, of your ears, of your feet, of your hands, of your body. Every part of you, every bit of you, the Holy Spirit is taking control and possession of you. Paul said, don't be drunk. When you're, drinking, when you're drinking wine, the things of this world, it gets a hold of everything that you are. You act like a silly clown when the, when the world gets a hold of you. When we're being filled with the things of this world, 
It takes control of us. Look at a drunk man. Look at a man that's been drinking. He's full of wine, full of whiskey, full of beer, full of alcohol. Look how he behaves. Look how he acts. Every part of him, his mind, his, his, his body, everything is being controlled. And nothing else is important to him but what's going on at that moment because he feels so good. People that are on drugs, when they're filled, when they fill their body with drugs, they feel like flying. <laughs> and nothing else in this world matters. They just want to feel good and feel like they could fly. Don't be drunk with that. Amen. Amen. Don't let the things of this world control you. God has better things in store for you. Hallelujah! God has better things in store. You are the light. Open your eyes and look. Open your heart to God and be filled with his spirit so that you can see over into the things of God and realize man there ain't nothing this world can offer me that can even compare to what God <coughs> nothing this world can offer us can compare to what the Holy Spirit brings forth in our life. Amen. Nothing. Don't let the devil fool you. Nothing. Amen. Not money, not alcohol, not drugs. Amen. Stay away from witchcraft and sorcery. Yes. It, can't, it can't offer you anything but Nothing. destruction. Amen. It will destroy your soul. It will destroy Amen. you. Be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Let God have control Amen. of your life. Stand with me, everybody. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the natural man does not have the Spirit of God. The carnal man has it, but he lives in his flesh, by his flesh, the carnal-minded man. The spiritual man has the Spirit, and the Spirit has him. Amen. It's one thing to have a hold of God. It's another thing for God to have a hold of you. Man. Woo. Hallelujah. When the Lord gets a hold of us. The way he wants. Mm. Man. Wonder why we always say man. How about woman. Yeah, it's like when Adam saw Eve for the first time. Whoa, man! <laughs> I mean, I would have. <laughs> Whoa, man! <laughs> when the Lord gets a hold of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul is encouraging. That's what he's directing his... his uh, 
the church to, to listen to what he's saying. This is what he's teaching them. The Holy Spirit wants to control your life. Yes. Don't be controlled by this world. Amen. That's what you once were. Now you're light. Yes. Be filled with the Spirit. Be controlled by the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because good things is coming. Amen. amen. It's time to get on the train. It's time to get with God. It's time to, amen, get with it. Get with God. Get with the Lord. I believe this church, with all my heart, has, has been getting with the Lord. And we're getting more with the Lord. And we're getting more with the Lord. Amen. And we're not going to let go. Here we are. We're tagging along, Lord. I don't know if you're getting tired of us or not, but here we are. Amen. We're coming. You know, the Lord's not like we are. He doesn't look behind us. Are you still tagging along? <laughs> Lord, I got to hold the hem of your garment. And I'm not going to let go. Jesus is just saying, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's good things to happen. There's good things to come. With God. Amen. And so we walk in that hope. We walk in that encouragement. We walk in that faith. We walk in the word of God and the promises of God and the fulfillment of God. And when I preach the word of God, that's what I want to preach to you, the hope of God Amen. for you. Father, thank you this morning. For the Holy Spirit has led me into that word of hope and faith. That word of, that lifts us up. That lifts us up out of this world. That lifts us up out of our doubts and out of our fears. And out of ourselves. And into you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not partake of this world, but partake of that heavenly world. Amen. We don't want to drink of this world. We want to drink of the Spirit, Lord. We don't want to be filled with the world, but filled with you. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing. Because only you can satisfy the longings of our heart. The heart that you gave us. You gave us the heart we have now. And it's only you that it seeks. The heart that I have seeks only you. Forgive me, Lord, if I go astray and I lose sight of you. Help me to focus entirely upon you in my life. Not what I will or what I want, but what you will. Not my will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen.